Now that we've seen how to recognize when a chemical reaction has taken place, let's take a look at how we represent them. Recognize that a chemical reaction involves the reorganization of atoms. Bonds are going to be broken and new bonds are going to be formed. This is the reaction for when hydrogen and oxygen combine to form water. The reaction is written two different ways. You have the molecular view, trying to demonstrate what is actually happening with the molecules, and then the way we would write this reaction. Notice in the molecular view that you start with two hydrogen molecules, and a molecule means two hydrogen atoms were chemically bound together. Those two hydrogen molecules are combining with an oxygen molecule. These bonds are breaking, and these bonds are breaking. New bonds are formed between the oxygen and the hydrogen atoms. There are several things that you should be aware of. One is that the number of atoms remains balanced on both sides of the equation. I have one, two, three, four hydrogens on the left and one, two, three, four hydrogens on the right. There are two oxygens on the left and two oxygens on the right. The reaction is balanced. This arrow indicates that a reaction has taken place, and we typically read the arrow as yields. So hydrogen plus oxygen yields water. The things on the left-hand side of the equation are what you start off with. That, those are your reactants. That's what you had before the reaction took place. And then the right-hand side of the equation represents your products. That's what you have after the reaction has taken place. So your reactants will yield your products. It is also very common for a chemical reaction to indicate states of matter, meaning whether or not something is in the liquid, solid, or gas phase. Here you can see the states of matter are indicated after the substance that they are referring to, and they're listed in parentheses. Whenever you see an S in parentheses, that tells me that the substance is a solid, an L tells me that it's a liquid, G tells me that it's a gas, and then AQ indicates that whatever that substance is, is dissolved in water. It is an aqueous substance. Chemical equations are the simplest and most common way for representing a chemical reaction. The equation tells me what atoms are present. Every time you see a capital letter, that is a new atom. They tell me the arrangement of the atoms. Every time you see a space, then you have seen a separation between two molecules. You have methane molecules and oxygen molecules on, in the reactants, carbon dioxide molecules and water molecules in the products for this reaction. There are two different types of numbers present in a chemical reaction. The first one is a subscript. A subscript is a small number that comes after an atom, and it tells you how many of that atom are present in that molecule. For example, methane has four hydrogen atoms bonded to one carbon atom. If there is not a subscript after an atom, you can assume that it is a one. So subscripts only apply to the element that they are directly following. Subscripts come from crossing down your charges, which we saw in the last unit. Once you have crossed down those charges and determined your subscript, they are fixed. You cannot change a subscript to balance an equation. In order to balance an equation, you need coefficients. Coefficients are larger numbers that come before molecules, and they apply to the entire molecule that they are in front of. So this is telling me that there are two whole water molecules. If you are trying to balance an equation and you're trying to count up the number of atoms on each side, you would multiply subscripts by coefficients. For example, in the case of water, there are two times two, which is four hydrogens, and then two times one, which is two oxygens. So your subscripts cannot be changed. They come from crossing down your charges. And then your coefficients are added in order to balance the equation, in order to get the same number of each type of atom in the products and in the reactants. One of the most common mistakes that I see with students is they will try to take a subscript and bring it across the arrow. They'll say, oh, there were four hydrogens over here on the left. I'm going to put a four right there. That is incorrect. You do not bring subscripts from the products to the reactants. You use coefficients to balance the equation. 
So let's focus a little bit more on this concept of balancing equations. The reason that we have to balance equations is because the law of conservation of mass says that mass can be neither created nor destroyed. A chemical reaction cannot create atoms or destroy atoms. It simply rearranges them. So all of the atoms that were present at the beginning of the reaction are present at the end of the reaction, and we balance the reaction to, to account for that. Recall that we cannot change subscripts in order to balance an equation. The equations that are in front of us have already had the correct subscripts put into place, and we cannot change those. However, we are going to be adding coefficients. Coefficients are added to equations to balance the number of atoms on each side of the reaction. For this first reaction, I have underlined the places where we are allowed to add numbers. You can add coefficients directly in front of any molecule present. However, you cannot change any of the other subscripts that are already in place. One of the strategies that I use when I first start balancing equations is to list all of the atoms that are present underneath the arrow. And then on the left hand side of that arrow, I'm going to list how many atoms are in the reactants. There are two nitrogen atoms in the reactants and only one nitrogen atom in the products. I'm going to do the same thing for hydrogen. There are two hydrogens in the reactants and three hydrogens in the products. My goal is to make these numbers match. I want to have the same number of nitrogens on the left and on the right, and the same number of hydrogens on the left and on the right. At this point, you just pick an element and start trying to fix it. I'm going to start with the nitrogens. On, for the nitrogens, I have two on the left and only one on the right. So I'm trying to find a number that I can put right here that's going to be multiplied by my current number of nitrogens, because remember, we multiply coefficients times subscripts. So what times one will match my two over here? I'm going to be putting a two right here for nitrogen. That changes my number of nitrogens on the right-hand side of the equation to a two. It also changes my hydrogens. Now I have two times three, which is six hydrogens on the right. So I have fixed the nitrogens, but I have messed up the hydrogens, which is fine. I just need to add another coefficient somewhere to try to fix the hydrogens. I look on the left-hand side and I see that I have two hydrogens already in place in that molecule. What coefficient can I put here that's going to get multiplied that by that two to match six. Two times three is equal to six. So a three right here will change this number to a six and my equation is balanced. I have two nitrogens on both sides and six hydrogens on both sides. There is not a number in front of this first nitrogen, which is fine. A person will look at that and recognize that that is like a coefficient of a one. So a blank for a coefficient means that the coefficient is a one. The beauty of balancing equations is that you can always check yourself. You can always take a step back, look at what you've written, and make sure the number of each type of atom on both sides of the reactions matches. I have two nitrogens on the left and two nitrogens on the right. Three times two is six hydrogens on the left, and two times three is six hydrogens on the right. My reaction is balanced. I also want to point out that it's a very common situation to have a two for, hydrogen, or for an atom on one side and a three on the other side. When that happens, you're going to need to go up to a six. So multiply each side by whatever it needs to go up to a six. Let's take a look at our second example. Once again, I have listed the atoms that are present beneath the arrow. I'm going to go through and count what's present on each side. I have three carbons on the left and only one carbon on the right. I have eight hydrogens on the left and two on the right. With oxygens, there are two on the left and then I have two here and one here for a total of three on the right. One strategy that works well for me is that whenever an atom is split, whenever an atom is found in two places on one side of the reaction, I'm going to approach that atom last. So I'm going to be dealing with oxygens last. 
This is a combustion reaction, which we'll study in a later video, but typically for combustion reactions, you want to start with your carbons, then go to your hydrogens, and take care of your oxygens last. Let's begin with our carbon atoms. I have three on the left and only one on the right. I'm going to put a three right here to balance my carbons. That changes this number to a three. However, it also changes our oxygens. Now I have three times two, which is six oxygens here, plus this one right here. So now I have a total of seven oxygens on the right. Now that carbon is balanced, let's focus on hydrogen. I have eight on the left and only two on the right. So what number can I multiply by two to make it go up to eight? That would be a four. So I'm gonna put a four right here. That changes my number of hydrogens on the right-hand side to an eight. However, it also changes my oxygens. My oxygens, there are three times two, which is six here, plus four here. There's a total of 10 oxygens now on the right-hand side. So carbon is fixed, hydrogen is fixed. Now let's look at the oxygen. I have 10 on the right and two on the left. A five right here will change this two to a 10 and complete my balanced equation. Once again, you should always step back and check yourself. I have three oxygens on the left, three on the right. Eight hydrogens on the left, four times two is eight hydrogens on the right. 10 oxygens on the left, then I have three times two, which is six oxygens here plus four, 10 on the right. This is a balanced reaction. Let's look at another example. This time there is a reaction that has a polyatomic. And notice that the polyatomic stays the same on both sides of the reaction. I have nitrate on the left and nitrate on the right. When that is the case, when you have a polyatomic that stays together on both sides of the reaction, you can simplify the way you think about the different things that are present in the reaction. So once again, I've listed the elements that are present underneath my arrow. Notice that instead of listing nitrogen and oxygen separately, I listed the polyatomic together as one thing. That makes this reaction much simpler to balance, and you can do that any time your polyatomic stays together on the left and on the right. So now, just like before, I'm going to go through and count the number of each atom present on the left and on the right. Starting with calcium, there's one calcium on the left and one calcium on the right. Then I'm going to nitrate, and I'm looking at the whole thing. There are two of these nitrates. That subscript that's outside of the parentheses tells me the number of nitrates. So there's two nitrates on the left and one nitrate on the right, one sodium on the left, one sodium on the right, one chlorine on the left, and two chlorines on the right. So it really simplifies it if I keep the polyatomic together. Now I see that the first thing I need to fix is my nitrates. I'm going to do that by putting a two right here. That changes this number of nitrates to a two, and it changes this number of sodiums to a two. Now I have fixed my nitrates, but it has changed my sodiums. I can fix that by putting a two right here. That changes this to a two, and it changes this to a two. Now my entire equation is balanced. I can take a step back and check. I have one calcium on the left, one on the right, two nitrates on the left and two on the right, two sodiums on both sides, and two chlorines on both sides. This is a balanced equation. I have one more example for you. I'm just trying to show you some of the unusual things that you may run into when you're balancing equations. This is another combustion reaction that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Once again, my oxygens are split on the right-hand side. They show up in two places on the right, so I'm gonna tackle those last. Let's start by listing the number of atoms that are present on each side of the reaction. For carbon, I have two on the left and one on the right. Hydrogen has six on the left and two on the right, and then oxygen has two on the left and a total of three on the right. I'm going to balance carbons first by putting a two here. That changes the total carbons on the right to a two, and it changes the total oxygens on the right to a five. Then I go to balance hydrogens. I have six on the left and two on the right. Putting a three right here, 
3 times 2 is 6, will fix the hydrogens. However, it also changes the oxygens. Now I have a total of 4 oxygens here and 3 here, giving me 7 oxygens on the right-hand side. Remember I told you that we were going to look at an unusual case. This is a case where I'm, I'm running into a problem balancing because I have an odd number of oxygens on the right and an even number on the left. In order to balance this, I would really need a 3.5 right here, which is not a good thing. You don't want to leave a decimal in your coefficients. Technically, I do have a balanced equation at this point. All of the number of atoms on each side match. However, I don't like that I have a decimal as a coefficient. In order to fix that, when you have a 0.5 as a decimal, you can go through and multiply all of the coefficients by 2, and it makes them all whole numbers. So this one becomes a 2, this one becomes a 7, this one becomes a 4, this one becomes a 6, and now I have a balanced equation where everything is whole numbers. That concludes our introduction into chemical reactions and balancing equations. Stick around as we start to look at some of the common types of chemical reactions.